Hello, this is Matt Standridge again. I am going to be doing a video now showing the printing process of the indirect bonding trays. So in my last video, or previous video, we had made indirect bond, designed indirect bonding trays, and here I'm going to be using the Moonray S printer. So I have SprintRay moved uh, the Rayware software brought up here, and here are the trays. Now we're going. It's going to be printing from the bottom, and so I will. I will want to flip this around here. So somewhat like that. I will make some support guides off of these. Doesn't have to be perfect by any means because we're just printing them. And then whenever doing a clear material like these indirect bonding trays, we'll want to develop some heavy guides. So I'm going to go here to this generate support button. And on density and strength, I'm going to turn those up to high, not just medium. Okay? So I do that anytime I'm doing the indirect bonding trays. I also do that if I'm doing like a, a clusal guards or anything using like the ortho rigid or the ortho clear uh, materials. So there we go. Looks good. We'll go here to the printer. The material that we'll be using is the Nextent IVTs. I want to hit 100, and then that's it, and then we'll get to printing. All right, gang. So here we are showing the indirect bonding trays um, after they've been printed, and then alcohol bath, and then cured, and the supports and everything cut off of them here so that's what they look like flexible material but rigid enough that you don't really get a whole lot of um, uh, unwanted deflection so that's pretty nice so here is showing the upper right with the brackets in place uh, if you remember on the example video number seven wasn't quite in yet so that's why we don't have a bracket there but and you can see the retention is pretty good like it's and that's a the big reason why I drew the uh, border of the extended the border of the trays up over the brackets a lot more because before I was having a problem with them wanting to roll out but now it's pretty good so if you're new to orthodontics with brackets your identification dots are always going to be on the gingival Okay, gingival distal, um, your lower uh, incisors usually have them on both tie wings because they're fairly universal, but uh, for the identification, for the orientation, it's always going to be on the distal gingival, and because your border of your trays is always going to be to the gingival, your identification dots will always kind of be along the side, the border of the trays, if that makes sense. So. So loading them up is pretty easy. Now, once you get uh, efficient with all of this, this is a great thing to tr train your team to do. You know, ideally, eventually, once your team gets when gets used to how to do things, um, you're not the one doing this. You want your team to be the one doing this. That is what makes this the most profitable and the most efficient. All right, it's kind of hard to get used to putting these in while being on camera here. So, okay. So we put it in here, and you just push it nice and flush to the incisal there. Make sure it's fully seated, and that's it. So in the slots, you're going to have these two vertical lines here, these indentations, for those tie wings to sit into. And so you want to seat it nice and tight in there, and then as far incisally as possible, and that's what's going to seat that in there. So I'll show you what they look like once all of them are uh, loaded. Okay, and there we are. Here's the lower tray all 
loaded up there and here's the upper tray all loaded up and you can see uh, pretty good retention so you shouldn't really have too much issues delivering these into the mouth I will say I will probably uh, section these down the middle and turn them into quadrant trays I just like seating a quadrant at a time better than full mouth because it just helps uh, with isolation uh, so I will just take a sharp pair of scissors and divide these down the middle so when you see the delivery uh, you'll probably see these uh, in sectioned into court or into quadrants <laughs> alrighty so here we are delivering the indirect bonding trays um, as I said in the previous videos I like to cut them up into uh, quadrants so that way it's a little bit easier to seat and also to keep isolated um, my assistant Sarah's already uh, flower pumiced the teeth and so now I'm going to be using a little cleaning boost. Run towards me sweetie. There we go. Just hold there. Okay, so now we're going to start with the upper right, and I like to use, when doing indirect bonding trays, I like to use a flowable cement. Here we're going to be using a Flotane by, I believe it's Reliance if I remember correctly. together for me.